Mm -hmm. So um, Kiajums takes a very rich universe of um, Lovecraft, you know, with cosmic horrors, ancient gods, and they make this um, pen and paper RPG. So we take our roots from this, uh, this pen and paper RPG. Okay. Uh, did you guys uh, play the game? Or? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, okay, good. Oh, you the tabletop game? game? Like yeah, the, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Long time ago. That's that's pretty impressive. I know uh, a lot of these games are, are, are so, so popular, uh, tabletop coming back, and to bring this art and to bring this setting yeah. and to bring it so alive is such a treat for, for fans yeah, of Cthulhu and Lovecraft. Thanks, Stranger Things. You. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, I guess we can attribute them. I was going to say Matt Mercer and all the wonderful work the D&D community is doing. Shout out Anna Prosser. But uh, yep. the setting of Lovecraft is so, so important to his storytelling. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about where the game is set and is it northeast, northeast of the United States? <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. You want to go? Yes. So the story takes place on oh, a remote vision. island in dark water. You, in, you will play as Edward Pierce, a private investigator from Boston in the early 20s. So the story starts like a, um, a normal Lovecraft story. So uh, we've been hired to investigate on a very suspicious fire accident that mm -hmm. took the life of the Hawkins family. And as long as you progress and Pierce get closer to the truth, he will fall into madness and yeah, nothing good at the end. <laughs> And we are, are we trying to fall into madness? Are we trying to avoid and hold off madness as long yeah, as we can here? Yeah, more yeah. All right, all right. And uh, how does the madness as it encroaches upon our player affect the gameplay? Um, yeah, it's uh, a core question to this game. So it's not about uh, a system properly, okay? We try Let's to get put the player drink. inside the shoes of the protagonist of a Lovecraftian story. So the point is to make him become mad because every protagonist in a Lovecraft story becomes man in the head. Mm -hmm. So it's not about uh, playing with a system. We didn't want the player to uh, be uh, aware that there were system working behind the scene because then he would understand it and he could, uh, you know, have uh, um, uh, be able to master it. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so no, it's pretty story driven and you will become mad. The point <laughs> is, uh, can you retain some of your sanity in the end so you will still have some free will? No. I absolutely love that there are things that the player cannot see and does not know as they go through. Um, I'm sure, like, since it's a uh, very story driven, like your your choices like affect everything like around you and that kind of stuff. A photograph. Yes, not every choice, but yeah, you have uh, uh, at uh, several points in the game some very important cho choices mm -hmm. or action to take or not to take or decision. Uh, to know about something, something, or or to you know ig just ignore it. Those are the yeah the step the player player can can choose. Excellent. Um, as you're traveling through this game, uh, do you uh, stop and pick up uh, bits of uh, collectibles or lore or it's stuff like that? All about information. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's like uh, like hunting for clues. Yeah, but not in a shallow way. Okay. It's, it's more about, at the beginning, this is an investigation. Okay. But as your protagonist begins to understand that he put his fingers into something very horrific, then he will decide that, you know, it's not a superhero. So he will just say, oh, I just got to get out of here. Right. Yeah, so it's, uh, in the end, not very much a game of investigation. It begins like a normal case, as in most of Lovecraft, Lovecraftian story, but then it began. Uh, it's followers up with uh, some kind of uh, survival uh, pursuit. How linear uh, is the story progression? It's uh, it's linear in the f in the um, yeah. You do every chapter in a given order. Okay. okay. But uh, in every chapter you have branches. It depends on how you build your characters, the skills you decided to upgrade or not, the choice you've made. The action you took and the relationship she you developed there. with the main characters of our story. For example, you want to reach your objective, you can use your skill and lockpick a, a door, you can use your athleticism to uh, push obstacles, you can talk to some cop and make friends with him so he allows you to pass uh, through the main door, or you can, uh, I don't know, uh, learn things about uh, the tunnels underneath and decide to go that road. Okay, so there's a RPG system in place. Yes. Okay. Um, how does how do you acquire these skills? Is there experience or? Yeah. 
You have two ways. You want to explain? Yeah. So as you progress through the story, you will be rewarded by experience points. Okay. And there are some other skills that um, will develop only if you if you find the right uh, items on the environment, okay. like uh, forensic books or things like that. So we have a lot of um, skills such as occultism, psychology, investigation, or uh, even spot hidden, which is very important in uh, the KGM rulebook. So what you're saying is that a player who is slow and meticulous and looks at every, um, that's what I do, <laughs> will be rewarded yeah. because you'll find uh, more yeah, like... You'll be, yeah. You will be able to do better choices. Okay. So as a coward, who is afraid of facing <laughs> fears and will always make the safest choice to yeah. get through the place quickest, am I still going to be able to it depends. move forward in this game? <laughs> yeah, of course you will be, but some, um, some possibilities will close because you, you didn't act directly, you know? Sometimes you have to act fast, decide fast, and it will be a matter of guts and uh, uh, quickness. Well, my question is, we see a lot of games draw inspiration from Lovecraft and Cthulhu yeah. and and pay homage to the characters in their in their gameplay. But this is the one of the first times we've seen a game full on tackle Lovecraftian monsters. Yeah. So we have a lot of favorites, you know, Cthulhu everybody loves, but there's like the fish head villagers yeah. and the weird blobby gross people. How many other Lovecraftian characters are we going to encounter? Um it's hard to tell without spoiling the game. Okay. okay. That's fair. So we will uh, encounter some of the creatures of the Meadows, we will hear about other creatures of the Meadows without seeing them. The most merciful thing in the world is the inability of the human mind to correlate all its contents. We live on a placid island of ignorance in the midst of black seas of infinity. And it was not meant that we should voyage far. Madness is not a curse. With five feeble senses, we pretend to comprehend the boundlessly complex cosmos. I have seen the dark universe yawning. The gods pity the man who in his carelessness can remain sane to the hideous <laughs> end. Sanity. It's a curse. Madness offers the only freedom. 